Hey guys, it's the Basic Sorgonomics. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Back after my regent's recent stint at the Gathering of the Juggalos. If you want to hear more about that, check out the uh, I'll be in the Sorg Morning Afternoon Power Hour at Sorgatron.com. And, uh, and I may splitter a few things out here and there as as appropriate for the, for the shows here this week. Maybe we'll touch on some things. Maybe we won't. I haven't really decided yet. Lots of video but anyways, something, a funny thing happened to me yesterday. Sunday, actually, but whenever you're reading it, watch, or listening to this, maybe, maybe I don't know, there's a transcript on YouTube. Maybe you're reading us. I, I have no idea. But we go to do some errands, and I was really looking forward to coming back and just getting some sleep, because I was really kind of running on uh, some fumes there after coming back, being up all night, watching wrestling and, and, and the parties and all the crazy stuff out at the gathering. And I had maybe two hours sleep in a Walmart parking lot on the way home. But uh, we're, we're coming up uh, about two blocks down from our house, and we see this dog. And, of course, I'm about to say something, but I don't have to. My wife is already pulling over, and we are getting this dog into the car. Uh, apparently, very easily, since we had some Wendy's we had just purchased uh, so and, and eaten, and we had the scraps of in the uh, in our bag so so and it's nice you know kind of a medium-sized dog uh, looked like a beagle kind of thing and uh and we brought it home said okay what are we going to do with this we have a nice fence so we put it in our fence so we're keeping an eye on it it's got no tags we're trying to figure out what to do next of course the first thing we do with this uh, as we've done when we've uh, acquired dogs before and trying to find new homes for them uh basically took a picture put it on twitter put it on facebook hit up every local business community thing for the beachview area here in the south hills of pittsburgh uh that we could and fig- you know tagged all of our friends i kind of retweeted it tagging different people uh, you know, including Mikey and Big Bob are always really good ones to retweet. They just have so many followers in the Pittsburgh area and, uh, you know, and just other anybody we could think of, really just anybody we could think of that just has a great kind of Pittsburgh area uh, following. Uh, this could maybe loop back and, and really probably find somebody two blocks away. We go through, we're, we're trying to figure something out. I'm trying to find out when the Humane Society places are open, so maybe we can take that there and figure it out. Then we thought about the microchip. A lot of, par- a lot of uh, uh, yeah, parents, uh, a lot of dog owners are, are microchipping their pets. It's another dog collar kind of thing. It's, it's another, you know, uh, license kind of thing. And we finally figured it out. Uh, and here's a hot tip for you I found on Google. If you have a stud finder, you can actually use it to find it a chip and see if the dog has it apparently between the shoulder blades is where they're going to have the chip and we took a stud finder i stuck that thing on uh metal and we found a chip or it looks like a chip i guess we tested it on our chihuahua wicket uh because we know we haven't chipped them at least and there was nothing there so i was like okay now who does the chip 24-hour uh, veterinary uh, service hospital over on 88 and uh, Castle Shannon uh, has a reader. Awesome. We're going to check out the reader. Problem is, they got this dog from the Humane Society and did not update the information. It simply goes to the Humane Society, and we'd have to go there to follow up on that. So, Because they would have information based on the chip. That just it wasn't updated in the database that these guys would have access to. Meanwhile, while we're waiting, I get a message. Hey, I think you found my dog. Please give me a call on Facebook. Apparently, what happens is through all this stuff, one guy finds our tweet, sees the picture, says, I know that dog. This fellow that uh, I'm on the phone with says, yeah, my cousin that we haven't talked to in, like, I think he said a couple of years, gives me a call and says, hey, I think this guy found your mom's dog. So he follows through, apparently finds us on Twitter, or I'm sorry, Facebook, messages me, comments, all kinds of stuff, and uh, we coordinate. Turns out, about a block away, return the dog, and there we go. I'm not telling the story for my own. Like, this is what I do with dogs. I, I I think it's really awesome that this this was a process of about two hours that we got the dog and got it and connected the, to to people. 
versus if you're going to do, you know, I was like, okay, at what point do I go make some signs and start putting them around the neighborhood? And also, how far did this dog even come from? Who knows? There was a tweet from somebody or, uh, that, that said they saw the dog as well earlier today, uh, but they wouldn't, it wouldn't get into his dog. And I was like, well, Wendy's was obviously the trick there. But that it went out so far and yet came back, boomeranged back to our neighborhood or wherever this other guy was. Who knows? You know, I'm guessing he's probably found us via the Mikey and Big Bob stuff. Because, again, how many freaking people follow them, right? And it's, it, it, they are like the, I think they are still the like number one rated morning show. They have an audience. And like the common denominator of Pittsburgh seems to uh, go through them or a Bill Peduto account or something like that. Uh, and, uh, and I think, I think that, and, and who knows, it could have been somebody else could have been somebody else totally random that there's a weird connection to these people, you know, se- uh, eight degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of situation on Twitter, but that's exactly right. This is exactly what this is for. There is something from, uh, uh, some of my kind of looking into LinkedIn and trying to figure out how it works and, and, and whether it, it's something worth putting time into. And there was uh, something I read at a certain point, and I think I conveyed that in, in some of my shows here, that you don't work on LinkedIn because you need it right now. You don't work, you work on LinkedIn because you might need those contacts that you've made somewhere down the line when you need that new job, when you're looking for that specific job. You're, you're really kind of uh, calling the field, you know, or I'm not even calling the field, though. You're, 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 you're tending the soil to something that will grow into something Uh, amazing later on you know me getting on twitter today and saying i'm going to tweet about this dog that got lost is not going to help is not worthwhile but because of honestly these relationships and these connections and knowing okay if i include these people that has x many people that will see this picture right because me say i'm so and so and i have 50 followers who are those 50 followers are they people that are in the area for one, you know, this was really, I think a prime example and an unpredictable example of what all of that networking we do on Twitter and Facebook ends up with. And a really cool owner was super grateful. I guess, uh, they had forgot to leave the basement door closed and the dog just like heard it, whatever, and zipped right through the basement and out from upstairs and and the dog was the dog is feisty one very curious he was he was very much inspecting and i was pretty sure our fenced in area would not hold him for long he would figure it out uh also very strong uh i noticed was we were walking him to the vet hospital and stuff he kind of caught me off guard a couple of times there so so in the long run just really cool that that kind of happened uh an interesting mix of technology um you know, again, if the f- social media didn't work out, the chip was going to in the end. Also, if you got your your dog from the pet uh, and you're aware that there's a chip, make sure uh, not, uh, not a pet from a, um, a shelter of some sort. Make sure they update the, the chip or, or find out they have one. Again, stud finder trick. You got that, too. So in the meantime, I am uh, considering my dog is well overdue for uh, getting his checkup shots, etc. I'm sure grooming a little bit too he's a fuzzy little beast but uh i'm definitely going to be inquiring in myself uh the chip system uh, for my for my dog uh because you know never know and and you know again i'm kind of skeptical and didn't ask you know why does this dog not have tags for instance but there's that especially something that big right just in case in the city and um and i know they've been making rounds supposedly checking in to make sure everything's been on the up and up for like pet licenses but do you have the license a cat? I don't know. The cat's always indoors. I don't know. Probably shouldn't be vocalizing that. Anyways, my cat's still afraid to go outdoors, actually. Let me know what you think. Have you uh, been in a situation where your, your dog has been lost, cat, whatever? Uh, you found one and, and, and did social media technology with the chips um, kind of help that reconnect? Let me know on the Twitters at Sorgatron. Comments to the blog at Sorgatron.com. And wherever else you may find this in audio and video formats. If there's a comment system, I'll be keeping an ear out for it. So until next time, have a good week and um, go pet your furry animal.
could mean a sibling or a significant other. You never know. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.